Lou, off the back of the popularity of the women's game in terms of Lionesses winning the Euros and the popularity of the Women's World Cup, we've seen a lot of girls and women get involved in the playing side of the football, but how do you get more women involved in the, in the officiating aspect of it? I think there's no better time to be involved in women's football and, and officiating, especially there's so many more opportunities now. There's so much more infrastructure around um, women and girls refereeing. And there is more of a, an explicit pathway of grassroots to the elite game. So much more focus on support, nutrition, strength and conditioning, lots of opportunities for match officials to access in terms of games and developing their experience on field and off field. Um, and it's one of the best careers you can ever have. So I would highly recommend. You mentioned support in your answer there. Um, there's been a lot of light shone on spectator and sideline behaviour from fans and how it affects officials, both Lions people and referees. Is there enough being done to protect and support officials, officials in the game? I think we're on the journey and that journey takes time and it takes um, intervention from lots of people. I think in terms of support for referees, it's always evolving because support is very individual to the um, to that person and their needs. But it's also got to come from those that are perhaps um, not as mindful as they could be with how they vocalise refereeing decisions, for example. So I think it's about just being self-aware, some accountability and thinking about would you want to be spoken to like that, particularly in your job or your volunteering as a match official and are we going to get the best out of people by shouting at them? Probably not. Yeah. So what can we do to make that on-field experience better for the referee, for them to thrive? And in terms of your individual pathway, um, you've, you've progressed through the games, working from grassroots all the way up to working for the FA right now. Um, what do you see yourself doing within the next five years in terms of officiating and refereeing? Um, so I'm recently just retired from on-field. Um, I refereed in the Women's Super League for the last four years. Um, our first baby is due in October, so I'm going to take some time out. Congratulations. Uh, thank you to um, raise a family. But for me, it's continuing those off-field opportunities. So I currently observe. So I've just been accredited to observe at 2B status, yes. which is National League South. And I also coach in our FA programmes as well. So FA core and emerging talent programmes. It's really important that we upskill our current workforce and our next generation um, for them to go on and have the opportunities I've had. I think that would be really remiss of me not to, to pass or pay that experience forward. So Adji, can you explain to me your role as an ERD referee, please? Yeah, the... Um... ERDP refereeing program is the elite development refereeing program set up by the PGMOL. Uh, there's been a significant amount of investment in refereeing uh, at the professional game mm -hmm. to ensure that the referees are a lot better, more equipped um, for the game demands of the modern football. And as a result of that, there's now a number of uh, colleagues and myself in a group of 24, the first cohort, uh, who are receiving that sort of specialist training support and coaching to ensure that we are better prepared uh, as a refereeing team for the game of today and the future. And what does that entail in terms of making sure you're better prepared? Well, effectively, I am now an employed staff within refereeing. So refereeing is now my, my uh, part-time job, so to speak. And that requires me to obviously have a much more detailed training program around fitness, uh, mental preparation for game, but also uh, getting involved through coaching uh, looking at games, uh, pre-games, post-games, tactics, um, football intelligence, insights, so that when you go into a game, you are much more better prepared as a referee to cope with the demands of the game, but also having the understanding of what to expect from both teams so that you can referee the game to the level expected by both teams. So what makes it quite difficult for match officials is the touch of sideline behaviour from spectators. How do you combat that and do you think enough has been done to protect match officials? It's a really, really great question. I, I think fundamentally people need to recognise that referees are human beings. And I know I say that as an obvious uh, statement, you know, but it's probably the only job I know that you've probably got to make about three to 400 decisions in the space of 90 minutes. So whilst you might be prepared, you may get certain things wrong. Um, I think sometimes uh, with spectators, uh, they come into the game and inside lines with tinted glasses. Yeah. They only see things on their own side. Whereas the referee sees what it should be seen and trained to see 
what you should see. So whilst there is understanding of um, disagreements, because that's what football, I think, doesn't necessarily condone the level of sometime behaviour we experience within the game. And I, I, for one, I'm delighted that the FA are doing a little bit more to combat that this season. So you've explained your role as an ERDP ref. Can you explain the work you do with BAM ref in terms of making sure that historically underrepresented minority groups are represented and present in, in the game today? Yes, indeed. Um, I mean, BAM ref as an organisation was set up uh, about four years ago, uh, primarily looking after black Asians and mixed heritage referees. Um, I think when you look at the game today, it is probably fair to say that if you look at the participants, the players, there is a good representation of, of people of, of all creed and race, uh, so to speak, within the participant. However, when you look at refereeing, uh, which is very much part of the game, uh, it's, it's obvious that there is a lack of representation uh, the further up you move into the game. Now, refereeing is a refereeing family. There's about 30,000 referees qualified in this country, of which 8% are from black Asians and mixed heritage communities. Mm -hmm. When you look at the pro game, there's less than 1% representation uh, in the pro game, which is, tells us um, that there is, there is a challenge there quite yeah. clearly. So BAMREF was really set up to, to look at and help stakeholders address those challenges, mm. primarily around recruitment. But more importantly, when you have got 8% uh, representation within refereeing in general, what can we do around the retention and the promotion strategy to ensure that those referees from those communities are getting a fair crack at the whip, you know, opportunities to show their talent, but also to help drive the recruitment strategies. So our BAM ref work has been pretty predominantly around working with the FA and working with professional game to ensure that we are attracting referees from our communities yeah. into referee, but more importantly, supporting them to ensure that they can be the best referee they want to be in the game, no matter what the level they operate at. And you're a trailblazer in your own right in terms of what you've done for refereeing. Um, see someone like Akil Housen, who is the first uh, black match official in the Premier League for 15 years since you're not your Can you explain explains uh, the effect of somebody like that being so prominent in the game and how much that will influence maybe young people from ethnic minorities to get involved in match officiating? I think, um, if, if I'm being fair on Akil, I, mean, I feel Akil is following his own dreams. And, you know, whilst he, his dream is his own, uh, yes, there is um, element of visibility required to give people that that vision that they can be it. Because if you can see it, then you can be it, yeah, uh, ultimately. And if you can't see it, then you ask the questions. And, and I think myself, going through the game, you mentioned your irony. Um, I, I think it's probably fair for me to say, other than your irony, in the history of our game, about 150-odd years, there's only ever been eight officials of colour. Mm -hmm prior to, to, to myself getting involved that I know that I've ever been in the game, which is, you know, remarkably quite a low number. So myself going forward, obviously, I, I recognise my responsibility. But I think more importantly, similar to Akil, this is my dream, mm -hmm. you know, and if it has a positive effect on other people, fantastic, great, why not? But ultimately, it remains the fact that I, I'm in referee, not because of that reason, because I love refereeing, but it's important that... Uh, I demonstrate that to people that look like me and people that look at Akil and Sonny Gill and Boops Gill, mm. you know, that there is opportunity for them as well, if that is their dream, to follow their dream and become the best referee they can be in the game.